Hey, thanks for stopping by and checking out another video of mine. Uh, 79 Hearst Olds guy here, and what I have before you here are obviously three rifles. Uh, all of them are in the 20 caliper range, and all of them are Sheridans. Uh, but what I wanted to touch base with today was primarily these two in the front, and the super grade that's in the back is, is kind of just for reference here. Uh... On the Super Grade, they came out in 1947, and the production, I believe, went through 1953. And then the Model Cs, uh, these two in the front here, uh, came out in 1949. And the very first Model C to come out actually came with a slab-sided stock, which is what you see back here on the Super Grades. And they then changed in 1950 to just this, I'll say, standard uh, non-slab sided stock here. Uh, but there were various uh, minor changes uh, made in the very early years, and I wanted to kind of point out uh, a couple of them in case you're out looking at a rifle and maybe this can help you out or so. Uh, the one here in the middle is a 1951, and the one here closest is a 1952. And looking at them, uh, they're pretty much identical, generally speaking. Uh, it's those little differences that will help uh, help you tell them apart. Uh, they both had manufacturing of about uh, 4,500 guns for each, each year or so. And uh, I'm not 100% on that, but as memory serves... Uh, the both have a uh, silver streak stamped into the side uh, back here right before right below the receiver and the bolt uh, and on the opposite side they're both stamped with racing wisconsin although there is a little bit subtle difference in the stamp here so let me uh, show you one of the differences which is going to be the front sight on both of these guns uh, on the 1952 You'll notice the ramp in the sight here has kind of got a well gradual taper up and then pretty much a 90. And then on the 51, it's pretty straight up and then I guess hard, kind of not even straight up, uh, angled up and then uh, kind of recess backwards looking here. Um, the 1951, one of the differences between this and the 52, and I believe in 1950 as well, they had screws holding in the front forearm here and on both sides versus on the next year, the 1952, they went to the roll pins. So... Uh, Clearly, you could obviously see the difference there. They both had the knurled windage uh, rear sights, and the rear sights are, are soldered on, uh, which I actually kind of like a lot better than later uh, models in the C where they kind of have those clamps on there because I've seen more of the barrel separation uh, around that area where those uh, rear sights are affixed uh, than clearly anything like this. Um, here we, you can see the silver streak uh, and then also the thumb safety. Uh, both of these guns will have that. The thumb safety uh, was replaced in 1963, if I'm remembering correctly, by the rocker safety, uh, which is on either side of the, the housing in the back here. So we'll put this one down here on the 1951. Again, silver streak. Uh, thumb safety, uh, pretty much identical. Uh, small trigger guard as far as uh, width goes, and then held on by two screws. But on the marking side, you'll see it says Sheridan Products Incorporated, Racine, Wisconsin. Now, according to various information, uh, it's supposed to have some, like, made in the USA, but this particular rifle does not. Um, another thing that helps uh, in 19, to date this rifle, in 1951, they started adding this little access hole port, 
uh, into the side of the receiver, and then that uh, went on for a number of years. Uh, but uh, this the stamping helps show it as an earlier gun, uh, as well as that front sight that I, I showed you uh, earlier. And then on this, on the next year model, 1952, you'll notice it does say Sheridan Products, Racine, Wisconsin, or WIS, <laughs> made in the USA, and then that same exact uh, uh, access port is still present. Uh, high comb rear stocks, and then if you proceed back, straight uh, butts. Uh, the later later versions, not too many years in the future, would actually have a slight curve, slight curve to it. Uh, so that was the primary differences there in the next years. This, um, these were made uh, well, starting in 1949, and then went to 1976 or so. Um, In 1953, this knurled windage knob was actually discontinued. So if you have a knurled windage knob, you can automatically assume, I guess, 1952 and earlier. So when if you're out and actually looking at uh, one at your local pawn shop or somebody that might be selling one or so. But uh, anyway, uh, let's see if there's anything else right off the top of my head. And... Oh, the, uh, I was just looking at my notes here. The Crescent buttstock was actually started in 1955. So you can uh, help ID a gun earlier than 1955 if it has a straight straight buttstock. The, the High Combs stock, I want to say, was taken out of production in 58 or 1959, somewhere in there, but don't hold me to that uh, strictly. But... Appreciate you taking a look uh, with me here at these two particular rifles and the super grade. I'll do something a little more in depth on just to kind of give you an idea on that. And oh, one other thing is that they did make a Model B uh, between these two. Uh, they're actually much, uh, they're very rare gun. I think a little over a thousand were made. I do not own one of those. Uh, I think I've only seen one for sale. I want to say once, uh, and I didn't want to pony up the dollars for it. So anyway, thanks again for taking a look. I appreciate you stopping by.